Okay, it's Wednesday morning. And I uh, did not finish cleaning my warehouse last night. Yikes. That's not good. Look at that. The bottom of my car's falling off. That's not good. Okay, well, we're going to have to fix that. Go to the warehouse, and then we're doing a live stream today, and then I'm going to have to clean up some more. Okay, so here's what I'm doing. I've got my hot water in a thing. A, a, what's this called? A bowl? And I'm just pouring it on. Because what happened is, is so this must have came off when I was driving Ash to work this morning or yesterday. And it's got just ice in there and it's falling off. So I'm going to just tape it on my car for the time being. But I have to use this hot water to, uh, hopefully this works. Oh, it's kind of working. I mean, yeah, you can see it removing some, but this is obviously a very temporary solution. <laughs> the car's supposed to look. That's for sure. If it was summer, I'd use my hose. But as you can tell, it's not summer. It's the middle of freaking winter. Okay, so I got probably 90% of it off. Just pouring maybe six buckets of hot water on here. There's no way I'll be able to get all of it off in the winter. I need a hose, something like that. So I'm just gonna drive to work. I'm out of duct tape. I'm just going to duct tape this on until summer, um, and then I'll, I'll deal with it then because this car is seven years old, and I don't think it justifies spending 500 bucks, whatever the heck it would cost to have someone do that in a shop or whatever, put on whatever the heck this is. I assume it protects the car from rust somehow. So as long as I keep this sealed off with duct tape, you know, it's a black car. It's going to be dirty down here all the time anyways. It's not that big of a deal. I don't care. Some of you might care, but you know, cars are just vehicles to me. That's all they really are. Just getting you from point A to point B. Crisis averted. It was gonna like fall off. What, what am I supposed to do? Like if I drive with it like that, it's gonna get knocked off. I can kick it off and just have it already off. But I think pouring water on there and then just duct taping it is the most efficient and expensive solution, right? All right, so here's how the warehouse looks after maybe an hour of cleaning yesterday. Goals today, I gotta ship out a few things. But mostly I just want to um, organize this more so I've got more floor space. And then that pallet right there, that's, uh, I'm trying to fill that up full of inventory that I'm going to list uh, over the next few weeks probably. A lot of it's eBay inventory. That's why it's going there. I'm not a big fan of listing on eBay. Kind of a hassle, but it's good content for you guys. So uh, we're going to go through here. I bet I have, <laughs> I don't know how much money I have in there. I didn't pay a lot for it, but I bet it'll sell for a decent amount, a couple thousand dollars. Because a lot of that stuff is thrift store finds, or it's from bulk buys, or it's things I've just gotten along the way. Another one of the things I've been doing is listing my, these are all for parts, fancy VCRs, or you know, recorders, or that's a mini disc player right there. So I've been listing these on eBay for parts. Uh, I think most of them are 50 bucks plus shipping. This is like 80, that's like 80 plus shipping. Um, these are all items that either got returned and they weren't working, so they could have been swapped out by scammy customers or um, they broke in shipping or you know, I did a bad job testing them. I don't know how it's possible, but they all, when I bought them, they all worked. And uh, when I received them back from customers, they didn't work. So you, you tell me what happened. Um, I probably have 15 more that I have to go through. But here's the start. So let's say we get 50 bucks a piece for each of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 450 bucks minus eBay fees. Buyers paying shipping. So we're looking at 400 bucks profit off of, uh, you know, junk. And I didn't pay more than 10 bucks per for any of these. So that's a win in my book. We're live streaming right now. As you can see there, as you can see here, it's pretty fun. We do these live streams every, uh, every Wednesday around noon Eastern time. That was fun. Did the live stream two hours. Uh, now I'm answering emails. I got an email from somebody who does 
water bottles and they want me to drink their water bottles on my live streams and I drink a shit ton of water out of these red solo cups. So why not? Why not, you know, make some money. I can't imagine they're gonna pay me that much because my live streams only get two to 5,000 views per live stream. So I would guess maybe 50 bucks, 100 bucks um, every video. But if I'm doing it four times a month, you know, if they'll put me on 500 bucks a month just to drink water out of their, their live stream or out of the bottle on live streams, I think that's what my ask would be, right? I would say, okay, for the next six months, 500 bucks a month. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to compare it against the CPM they'd probably pay, right? Uh, and in my niche, which is finance stuff and resale stuff, um, finance I just say that kind of as an overlapping. I don't really give like financial tips, but it's money. It's how to make money, which is tertiarily related to finance stuff. Um, the CPM is between like 30 and 60 bucks more, you know, parts of the year. Um, and so if I can undercut that CPM while giving them like in video placement the whole time, that's gotta be worth some decent money. Uh, especially because those water bottles cost so much usually. I don't want to say the brand because, you know, if, if they don't pay, if they if they want to do some bullshit like, oh, well, we'll give you affiliate commissions, and I'll say, nah, I'll just, nah, no, thank you, um, because affiliate commissions on a on a thirty percent or on, on a, a thirty dollar water bottle is not going to add up that much, especially because. People aren't watching me because they want to. They want to buy water bottles. You know, I just I want to share with you guys like more of the ways I make money. And one of the ways I make money is by doing, you know, sponsored video stuff on on YouTube. Um, let's see, they they just emailed me back. I, it's a I hate this. It's a form email. Thirty bucks a video, eight percent of your traffic. Hmm. No. I would say 500 bucks for 10 live streams. That's what I'll counter with. I wonder if they're gonna watch, they're not gonna watch. They, that's the funniest thing is like, I can say all the shit I wanna say about any brand that I'm talking to because 95% of them don't even watch more than 10 minutes of your videos. You know, they, they say, oh, well, he's got so many subscribers and so many concurrent viewers, and this is this is worth it for us. Um, cold brand links. Okay. So it's, uh, I wonder. So I bet what they're doing is they're just probably testing to see if these 10 videos, the 300 bucks they want to pay me is a drop in the bucket for them. And they're going to see if it converts. And then they're probably one in every 15 influencers doesn't know how to charge for what they do or doesn't understand like how brands buy ad space and they're going to massively undersell themselves. They're going to say like, oh yeah, I'll, of course I'll do this for a thousand dollars for 10 videos. And they're going to be like a TikTok that gets like 5 million views per TikTok or whatever the hell that's called. Or they're, they're going to, um, <laughs> they're going to go on YouTube and be like, yeah, I only get $8 on my videos because half of them are demonetized and they're not really going to think about it in terms of like, how can I make this when you're doing like this kind of YouTube stuff, you're not trying to undercut anyone except YouTube themselves. So you want to make it where you're going like 15% below what an advertiser would pay, um, in, in CPM, right? Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just saying this, but that, that's what I do at least because here's the bonus for them, right? So besides having way more screen time, they can give you a more diverse array of trackable links and they have so much more ability to a B test than they do. Um, and these enormous campaigns through AdWords. And I don't mean like a B test, like landing pages. I mean like placement and videos, the text you have, even products being shown. You just have so much more control than you do over um, over buying uh, AdWords, AdWords ads, uh, or whatever else they do. You know, it's gonna depend on, I guess, the platform. Um, so I'm gonna counter with 500 bucks for 10 videos, which is gonna be two and a half months. And I'm also gonna ask for T-shirts, because I'm gonna wear a T-shirt, so they can, that's how they're gonna know it's, you know, it's me. Um, because they say like, one of the things they say is the, the, the bottle has to be visible throughout the video. 
And I can't guarantee that unless it's like on my chest. Today has been a trying day. I cut my thumb off. <laughs> my car broke again. So what happened is you saw the ice on there. Totally different issue. The alternator had to be repaired. Normal. The car's getting old. Normal thing to do. Uh, it also screwed up the ballast on the passenger side headlight. So um, normally no big issue, but because everything has been kind of stagnant economically for about a year here in Michigan, uh, I have to drive across the freaking state to buy this, to drive it back, to have it installed tomorrow so I can leave by tomorrow afternoon to go up north. What that means is one, I can't get any work done today. Two, I have to push back a podcast interview with DC Picker. Check out his YouTube channel. I've been on his before. He's a great guy. Uh, I, I feel like an asshole because I moved it up and now I'm pushing it back. And he probably thinks that I'm just yanking his chain. I'm not, I'm not John. You see that car? That's not my car. That's a loaner car that I have to drive across the freaking state. But anyways, we're getting the boxes out. I did 12 so far. We have about 45 to go. Um, awesome. So if you bought a, a mystery box and you're not happy with it, email me, right? Uh, the last thing I want to do is screw up and rip you off. I don't, I'm opening them up all again and I'm making sure that they're all good in my opinion. But if I miss something, reach out to me because I am not trying to rip anyone off. I'm trying to clear out inventory. So I have no problem uh, sending you more things. No problem at all. Um, we're, I'm gonna close the listing, the, the listing. I'm gonna close the page. I'm gonna say it's sold out because we sold about, yeah, like 45, which is a lot of boxes. Um, there's enough inventory here for that, but because of what just happened and how I have like a day, a day less this week to work, um, I'm going to be, it's just going to be tough. So mystery box is closed for now. I'll open it up later. Uh, interview with DC picker pushed till next week sometime early next week, probably. Okay. We're back. Got the car part. They're putting it in my car. And I also got some mail, right? This came in the mail. I ordered these on eBay. I'm going to resell them. So let's go through and open these. The first one, look at this. The box is so wet. It's kind of dinged up. Hope it's nothing valuable. Oh, it's all the football cards I bought. This goddamn moron just crammed him into this priority mailbox with no padding. And then the idiot postal person put it in the one puddle on my front porch. One puddle. Yeah, let's just put the box on there. Awesome. Yeah, very smart. Tax dollars at work. Love it. So I got some panini contenders here. But look, right there. God. Little ding. Most of these boxes are okay. I guess I'll probably just open this one up in a video. Like, I don't want to sell a box that's got damage. So about these, right? These cost, with tax, they cost $21.20 or $0.19 cents or whatever it is. Uh, in Michigan, we have a 6% sales tax and they retail at like $19.99. So that's the, that's the price. I bought these on eBay for about 28 bucks per, including tax, I think. So I paid up for these, but not very much. Not very much. I was, I was If you follow me on Instagram, you will, you, you saw this post I made where I was trying to figure out like what my success rate is. And I have like a 5% success rate going to stores and giving these. And like each store is like a 45 or an hour minute trip. So basically in order to buy this many, I bought 10 boxes, 10 blaster boxes. In order to get this many, I, uh, I would have, I would have had to spend like 20 hours and, um, I make a heck of a lot more than $5 an hour or whatever it is. You know, that's what it had to have been. So we've got these. Um, I'm just gonna put them over on, on the, I've got some cards right here. I have some over there and I have some in my house too. So I'll just put these over here, I guess. And then we'll, we'll look at all these cards I have, right? I've just been stockpiling all summer. I should probably start selling a few of them off. I sold some of my Panini Prisms. Um, man, I have more than I thought. I sold some of those cards, uh, and that paid for, I, I tripled my money on 10 of those, and so I got about, 
400 bucks profit and I use that to buy most of these. So I'm probably maybe only in like 200 bucks. Well, then I bought these two, so these don't, those don't count. I'm in like 400 bucks or 500 bucks on a lot of cards. And I'm just gonna put these here for now. And then we'll open up the other um, box I got because this is not cards, this is a card. I bought a single specific card right here. You see, this is a, a lot more smartly packaged. All right, here's the card I got, and it's a DK Metcalf and Jordan Tawamua or Tia Amu, or whatever his name is. He's the he's like the third stringer in Kansas City, and so when Patrick Mahomes got his bell rung, I bought this card for just like a, I think just for like a dollar, a dollar plus shipping. It's like four bucks total. That's just more like whatever. It's kind of fun. And then this under here. If I remember correctly, I think it's video games. I bought a bunch of video games on eBay. It's a pretty good deal. Okay, let's go through this now and see what we got. Roost, The Art of Deception. That game looks kind of fun, actually. I think that that game's worth like 50 bucks. Time Shift. Bloodstone. War of the North. A lot of like strategy RPG games. I didn't look up every single title. I looked up, um, I only paid 30 bucks for it plus shipping. So as I looked up like two games and two of the games were worth um, a lot of money. I think like between the two, it was like 70 bucks or 80 bucks. And if you're paying 30 bucks, the rest I can just auction off and so like money off of. So this is, uh, yeah, what a great packing job. Whoever this was and Kenneth Morris, thank you so much. You did a very good job. Unlike that idiot who sent me the Panini cards. Battlefields. Battlefield 3. Just Cause 2. A little box damage there, but that's I can just replace the case. Battlefield Bad Company 2 Ultimate Edition. These Battlefield games are not worth so much, so I might... What I'll probably end up doing is put them in a, in a mystery box. But if I were if I were to get these in a mystery box and I wanted to sell them, what I would do is I would lock them up together and I would put Battlefield 4, Battlefield 2, whatever, and I'd charge like five or six bucks a game. Uh, and you're making way more money, you know, overall. Your net profit's way more than if you were to sell the games individually because you're paying three or four bucks in shipping per game if you sell them individually. And if you lock them up together, you're paying three or four bucks because usually... My rule of thumb is that an Xbox 360 game weighs about four ounces. Uh, the ones that have manuals can weigh up to like six or eight ounces sometimes, like really big manuals. But like, um, like let me let me find out like this game right here, Just Cause. Is there a manual in there? There is. I'd say this weighs about five ounces. Um, this game feels like a lot of money too. Command and Conquer Games Wrath. This right here, Prison Break. Probably a very small manual. Not the biggest manual, but this, it's got the uh, recycle case where it's got like the cutouts makes it a lot lighter. Um, that weighs about four ounces. And so that's gonna ship for like three bucks and some change. And if these are scratched, I'm just gonna take them over to the, to the Eco Pro 2 right there and um, fix them up because you know, it does, a, it does a really good job. Okay, it's now Friday and this week was supposed to be an awesome vlog week, right? I had the GoPro, uh, but between not having batteries charged and car problems, and mostly just car problems, they're all fixed now, you know, that's the good news. It was just the kind of thing that happens when you own a car that has, you know, 100,000 miles on it, they need repairs occasionally. Between all of those things, I did not, like, I think this is good because it shows you what it's like to really be like a solopreneur, a solo entrepreneur, someone who does it all themselves, because you're gonna have things put in front of you, right? You're gonna have obstacles put in your path and uh, they're not always easy and sometimes you have to readjust uh, and you can't have a business model where you have to work 80 hours a week or 60 hours a week or even, I think, 40 hours a week, you know, to make the kind of money you need uh, because how the, I guess I could have just like done my stuff after work, but I don't wanna do that. I like being home by, six or seven, you know, after I go to the gym, if I go to the gym, or five if I don't go to the gym. So it's uh, it's a good lesson, boring. I, I don't know, we'll see if it's boring or not. Um, but it's just, I think, the funny thing is, is I still managed to get a lot of sales this week. I still shipped out my eBay stuff. Um, 
the there's the more some more mystery boxes I I shipped out. I shipped out probably I don't know 400 bucks in eBay sales and Amazon sales. I'm doing mostly FBA again, thank God. That would have been a nightmare if I had to do 25 FBM sales a day, but I don't because uh, a few months ago I started going back into FBM or FBA, I mean. Huh. So I gotta keep cleaning, you know? It's still messy here, still pretty messy, but that's okay. You know, it's no big deal. I'm not losing inventory. And a lot of this stuff is just gonna go into mystery boxes um, and then that'll clean out the inventory. I think that that's like one of the benefits of creating a community when you do it. That's why I tell everybody, if you wanna be an individual entrepreneur doing your own thing, you have to have a content business. You have to have a community around you. So uh, you can do things like this and you know sell 50 of these mystery boxes. I got five sales last night, a little more than, I guess more than that, but to sell a lot of mystery boxes. Or uh, you know, let's say you're a writer and you, you need to pay, you wanna put down a down payment on your house. You can do like a, a limited run uh, of like a, you know, your own anthology of short stories or you're an artist, you can do a new special edition run of signed prints or you're a, you know, a consultant, you're a CPA, you can do like special office hours where you do like half off, just stuff like that. When you have this community around you who appreciate the value that you provide, obviously I, I can't, I'm not gonna sell 50 mystery boxes every day. I mean, that would, I'd be making over a million dollars a year doing that, that'd be awesome. Maybe I should. Um, I don't think I can. It'd be a million dollars revenue, not, not profit. Um, because I, I, I did the math in a few of these boxes and most of the items I'm either getting out of liquidation pallets, uh, so I, I don't have really an accurate idea of what they're really worth because I threw out all the junk and I don't know what percentage was junk versus good stuff. And the thrift stuff, generally I'm charging about twice what I got the thrift stuff for in a box. So I can thrift $25 worth that sells for 250 that I sell for 50 um, is kind of how it's shaking down. But I don't think that I can do that every day and, and, and buy, let's see, 25 times 50 is going to be uh, 500, 2,500, right? Because 10 times 25 is 250 times five is um, 250, 500, 750. Oh, so it's 1250, 1250 bucks a day thrifting. I don't think I can do that. I don't think that that's possible. So I could, it's not like a sustainable, but it's a good cash flow. Um, I mean, it's not, I had the money to pay for the car repairs, but just like if I didn't, for example, if I was in a position where like, oh shit, I gotta make this money fast, or if I was, you know, paying off debt or whatever it was, and my car breaks down and I can't work for three days, you don't wanna be screwed over because you're trying to spend so much time making ends meet barely. Like you wanna have, I was talking, yesterday I talked to Christopher Lynn, Chris Lynn, who is Daily Refinement on social media. Um, and we were t really great conversation. And I began watching more of his videos and a lot of his, his the people who he's talking to, they wanna make 100K a year. Um, but I don't think they realize you wanna make 100K a year working 20 hours a week. You know, you don't wanna do it working 60 hours a week because then if you have a week off where, where you know, you break your leg and you're out for two months or whatever it is, your business is just derailed completely. So you wanna be in a, a position where you can either do a bunch of different small things that take very little time or very little effort, or you can outsource to a VA or whatever. Uh, and I, I think that's probably like one of the biggest misconceptions that a lot of people who want to get into having their own business uh, have is that you want to be somewhere, or if you're working 80 hours a week, you're doing a good job. I'm, like when I was younger, I worked in startups, uh, and we would always brag about how much we worked, which was so stupid. It's because we weren't doing anything valuable, and so our currency was like effort, not production, not what we were actually doing or selling, which is, you know, a, a common mistake a lot of people make. They think, oh, if I work a long time, I should get paid for this, and either paid in respect or paid in money, but they think that there's like, it's a one-to-one -one trade off, and it's really not. It's, you know, a market. Everything is some form of arbitrage in a sense, and so you don't want to think about like, how can I work the hardest for the longest amount of time you wanna think about how can I work the smartest and how can I enjoy my life as much as possible? And how can I find, instead of you know becoming an expert in one thing where you make a quarter million a year, but it's so hard to do that, you gotta work 80 hours a week. What are five revenue streams making you two grand a month? 
that are just easy, you know, the, the low hanging fruit. And that's not to say things that are easily replicable, but what are skills, easy skills that you are, you have a, a predilection towards? Like, I mean, like, let's say you like uh, books. What's a way you can make two grand a month selling books that you would like to learn about maybe over a year or two, but then when you see a book, you can make an instant value judgment and move on to the next one. Stuff like that, or toys, you know, or collectibles, or sports cards, or cars, or houses, a lot of stuff like that. Um, with varying degrees of difficulty and expenses associated with them. And so just like, that's what I guess the, the moral of this video is, is that even though I'm talking about, oh, I wasted my week. I didn't waste my week. Everyone has car problems. Everyone has plumbing problems at their house. Everyone has these weeks of their life where shit hits the fan. And you can't run a business that is contingent upon everything in your life going perfectly because that's, uh, that's a stupid thing to think is going to happen. That's, that's ridiculous. That's a crazy ask. So I think I'm going to end the video here, guys. Thanks for watching. And as always, don't be a shithead. Bye.